Here lies Bidoof. May he rest in peace. Here lies Bidoof, because everyone deserves a second chance. Here lies Bidoof. I should probably stop catching Bidoof. Hello everyone, I am Third Mario Brother, and welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we caught ourselves the mighty Rayquaza, who is now chilling in our party with the rest of our Pokemon. Yep, there's Raymond right there, taking a break from his normal 9 to 5 job to hang out with the likes of Dishwater and the Baconator. We should feel so honored to know such a classy gentleman. And, in this episode, since we now have Rayquaza, I feel like it's time to finally wrap up the whole Team Aqua, Team Magma, uh, Groudon, Kyogre storyline. So, as we noted, they're here on Mount Pyre. Whoa, where are you guys going? Come on, without a word? Brian, dot dot dot, dot dot dot, dot dot dot, to the fourth power. Is that it? Is that it? Maxi and Archie are gone without a single word. Are you kidding me? This is the last time we see them in Pokemon Emerald, and they're not going to say a single thing to us. Oh my gosh, how rude of them. That's absolutely horrible. I take back everything good I've ever said about them. Two men who took the orbs came back to return them on their own. Those men, perhaps they are not so evil after all, but they certainly aren't very good friends. I'm offended. It's my role to pass on the legends of Hoenn to future generations. In the crisis that just ended in Sutopolis, we wrote a legend. Have you the time to hear the new legend of Hoenn? Yeah, sure, why not? Don't, don't mind me if it looks like I'm browsing Twitter on my phone or something while you're talking. I mean, <laughs> I'm totally not doing it. It happened long, long ago. The world was racked by a ferocious clash between the Pokémon of the land and the Pokémon of the sea. The Pokémon of the land raised mountains and created continents. The Pokémon of the sea raised huge waves and carved out oceans. Their fierce duel raged without end. The world was engulfed in massive fires and vicious storms that no umbrella could handle. It was then that the Pokémon of the sky descended from a storm. The Pokémon, shining a vivid green whose jimmies were incredibly rustled, becalmed the two enraged Pokémon. Then, it's duty done, the green Pokémon flew off into the wild blue yonder, and that actually sounds an awful lot like what happened just a few episodes ago in Sutopolis City when we summoned Rayquaza to quell the dispute between Groudon and Kyogre. So, that being said, that is the end of Team Aqua and Team Magma. They have finished their evil ways. They have realized that they are not to tamper with nature in order to accomplish their goals. But we have Raymond in our party, and yay, I'm using the mighty Rayquaza as a chauffeur now. Ha ha ha! Ah, the abuse of power. It is too strong right now. It is too evident. And you know what? I'm liking it. I am liking using a literal demigod to chauffeur me around the region. I am totally into it. But... As I said at the beginning of this episode, we are going to be moving on toward um, Evergrande City or Evergrande City. Still going to say the pro both pronunciations both times because they both make sense to me, man. Let's go ahead and swap out Raymond, as powerful as he might be, for our good friend Blue because Blue is powerful in her own right. So... We are going to need some HM slaves this time around. Like um, you guys might have seen so far, we have Shino in our party, chilling there, because we're going to need the HM Flash eventually, probably in this episode. And we're going to need HMs like uh, Surf and Rock Smash and Waterfall, and I believe that's it. Surf, Rock Smash, Waterfall, oh, Strength. And what else? What else? What else? And Flash. Well, you don't actually need Flash. You don't ever really need Flash in Pokemon games to uh, explicitly, unless you're doing something like the Reggie side quest in Ruby and Sapphire. But that aside, Flash isn't really all that necessary. It just makes your life like 150,000% easier. Either way, Evergrande City is on the easternmost part of the Hoenn region. So that's exactly where we're going to be sailing to this time around. I know this might not be the most exciting of travel methods. I wish that Raymond could show for us around in the water as well. But... Unfortunately, Raymond, powerful as he claims to be, can't even learn Surf. Come on, what is with that, man? What a ripoff. I know, I know. It's the most powerful legendary Pokemon in the entire Hoenn region, and the gosh darn thing can't even learn the move Surf. <laughs> What a disappointment, Raymond. You're never going to move up in the corporate world like that. Oh, looks like we accidentally got ourselves a double battle here. Sunlight seems to be more harsh in this area. You're looking awfully tough. I wonder if I can win. He soliloquized to himself in front of the camera. You've got a strange way of talking there, buddy, and you sh probably shouldn't be doing your squats on top of the ocean. I mean, if you want to do them underwater, it'll probably make you feel a little bit stronger or something like that. If you want to do them on land, it might actually do something, but squats on top of the ocean, impressive as it might be and uh, adequate as it might be in... Oh, boy. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do here? I'm going to switch out to Shock, I believe, and go ahead and Psychic on this Tentacruel. But yeah, there are a couple trainers on the way to Evergrande City, and they have reasonably high-level Pokemon. We see here that this guy has 
or that these guys, rather, have level 35 Pokemon. We've got fully evolved Pokemon, Tentacruel, and Sea King. So, that is at least somewhat fair warning that we should be wary of what is to come, because the Pokemon we're going to be fighting in just a little while are going to be strong. Quite a bit stronger than this, actually. On Victory Road, I hope it's not too much of a spoiler that Pokemon games contain Victory Roads, whoa, there are like level 40 wild Pokemon. So, our team is really, really under level, and I might have to do some training, if not for um, making battles easier, but just for just for um, making repels more effective. I couldn't see very well because of the sun's glare. Excuses, excuses, man. Get out of here with that. Ouch. I guess it was impossible to win. Yeah, that is a fairly uh, good analysis of the situation, considering the reality was that you did not win. So. If I were destined to win from the beginning, I guess it were impossible to win. Either way, here we are at Evergrande City, and you see this gigantic waterfall here. I always wondered about this when I was a child. I would surf over here when I didn't have the HM waterfall, and I was like, what is this mysterious place? I want to go here. I only want to see what's inside. Unfortunately, I never could, because I never had the HM waterfall. Now, there is a Pokemon Center over here. We're going to want to heal up, if only for PP reasons. Okay, I lied. The only reason I went in there was not for PP reasons, but for uh, clearing my throat and taking a drink of water reasons. I know, sue me, but here we are at the end of every Pokemon game. This is Victory Road, where all the trainers separate themselves from the rest of the pack and have to prove whether they are worthy of facing the Pokemon League in the Elite Four immediately afterwards. So, here we go. Now, this is Victory Road, and this is quite the daunting place. Like I said, there are going to be really high-level Pokemon here, so make sure you take that into account. First of all, what does Dishwater have equipped? The Mystic Water? Eh, sure, why not? Right off the bat, we're going to be facing a very, very powerful enemy here, so you have to be careful. Super Repel or not, it's not going to repel the likes of Wally! Oh, boy. Hi, Brian. Uh, hi, Wally. How's it, how's it uh, going, man? Uh, I bet you're surprised to see me here. Oh, that doesn't even begin to describe it. I made it all the way here, and it's all thanks to you. Brian, losing to you that time made me stronger, but I'm not going to lose anymore. I'm going to win for the Pokemon who gave me courage and strength. Okay, here I come. Wow! I'm actually really impressed by that speech there, Wally. Apparently beating him the first time improved this kid's confidence and gave him what he needed to become a reasonably strong trainer. So you know what? We're gonna beat him again and then maybe he'll actually be a stronger trainer later on. Destroying this kid's hopes and dreams are what are going to build upon his hopes and dreams. Or maybe I'm just being totally masochistic right now and want to murder this guy in front of all his beloved Pokemon. I don't know. Either way, he's going to lead off with a level 44 Altaria. This is a Dragon-type Pokemon, but it's also Flying-type, so it has a quad weakness to Ice. And this Blizzard leading off with Dishwater is going to be a huge benefit to us. Now, you guys are going to remember that um, last time we fought Wally. He was kind of pathetic, at least compared to how he was now. He had like one Pokemon, two Pokemon. I don't even remember what the last Wally fight was, fight was like. But that was a long time ago in the series, and we didn't have to worry about anything. We took him out no problem. This time, however, his Pokemon are higher level than ours, so this guy has not been messing around the past couple dozen episodes, man. He has trained, and he has ri uh, raised quite the respectable team, actually. However... We've only got four team members here, and I'm still completely confident that we're going to be able to take this guy out because we've got perfect counters for pretty much every single one of his Pokemon. <laughs> I never realized that Delcaddy's animation on getting sent in to battle in this game was so adorable slash terrifying. That roar, man. That adorable Delcaddy roar. Oh, God. I hate sleeping through his team like this because if you don't have perfect matchups, this thing actually can be... Um, this battle, rather, can actually be very threatening and very difficult because he's got super powerful Pokemon. He's got Gardevoir, he's got um, another one we're going to see in a moment, but he's got the Roselia, he's got the Altaria, and these things can pose a legitimate threat. But not when you've got the team I have assembled, and I have absolute faith that we're going to be able to make it through Victory Road with no problems and take this guy out. Now, you don't face Wally until the very end of Victory Road in Ruby and Sapphire. And that, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, made this fight extremely difficult because how long and grueling Victory Road is, or at least it can be if you're not especially familiar with its layout and stuff, 
super, super annoying to fight this guy at the very, very, very end after everything, right before you have access to another Pokemon Center, or right before you get to the Elite Four. It was so frustrating fighting this guy for the first time. Oh my god, it made me hate Wally, and perhaps that has carried over. Either way, his Gardevoir is his strongest Pokemon. It's going to use Double Team a lot, and it's also going to use the move Future Sight. So even if you have a Psychic type that resists Psychic moves, this thing can still do some damage to you over a couple turns. But his last Pokemon is going to be Magneton, and as you guys know, Dishwater is packing the Earthquake, so we don't have to worry about a gosh darn thing. You're gonna glow blue, Dishwater, because you need to in intimidate this guy in his last few seconds as a Pokemon trainer. Actually, I kinda hope... I kinda hope that we don't destroy his career as a Pokemon trainer, because it's really, really cool, actually, thinking that we inspire this guy. I know it's entirely fake and it happens on every single save file, but I think it's a cool plot device. Like, Wally was, was originally the Pokemon catching tutorial, and here he's sort of like a slightly more difficult battle. He's, he's, he's a boss battle, you could consider him on. But I, I think it's really, really cool how we inspire this little kid to uh, chase his dreams. I think that's awesome. Wow, Brian, you are strong after all. Here, have my money. I respect you so much. I couldn't beat you today, Brian, but one of these days I'll catch up to you. And that's the last we ever see of Wally. <laughs> He'll just stand here indefinitely until the end of time, and we don't have to worry about him one bit anymore. Anyway, uh, one thing that I wanted to mention real quick is off-screen, I ended up teaching the Baconator Shadow Ball in place of Reflect, because really, we hadn't been using Reflect at all. I don't think we'd ever used it on-screen. If we had, it didn't really serve that much of a purpose, so I went ahead and got rid of that and taught him Shadow, taught him shadow Ball instead. So now he has some coverage against Ghost-types and um, other Pokemon that we're going to have to deal with later on that are, like, resistant to Psychic and stuff like that. So, here we are in Victory Road. May as well go ahead and get one of the items in this area. I believe if you come down this way, there's a hidden item, and there are quite a few hidden items in this area. Really, really high-level ones, too. I think the one we're going for right now... Eh, let's just leave Dishwater out for a Why not? I think the one we're going for right now is, like, a Max Elixir or something. I didn't come all this way to lose now. That possibility doesn't exist. I'm enjoying the confidence, my friend, but I've got even more with dishwater on my side with the Baconator with shock and, uh, is, is, hold on. <laughs> Are those all the team members that I have with me at the moment? Oh, and Heretic, of course. How could I forget the amazing, the daunting, the ominous Heretic? I've got no doubt that we're going to be able to plow right through your team with not a worry in the world. Now, I mentioned earlier in the Let's Play, it's kind of weird how all the trainers in Pokemon games seem to specialize in, like, one species of Pokemon or one type of Pokemon or something like that. But, Victory Road kind of disproves me on that. I know it's one portion of the game, but the Victory Road trainers tend to have really, really varied teams. And it's super, super cool because it's not only preparing you to take on more varied teams, even though we kind of don't after Victory Road, but actually fighting trainers with varied teams where you have to have type variation yourself in order to succeed uh, at a reasonable level. I think it's super cool, and I think it's super cool just fighting teams that aren't the same thing over and over, and I know, I know, I know, what a very bohemian, what a crazy out there opinion, I just think it's really cool fighting teams that have a lot of variety. So, let's go ahead and get rid of this muck, he's just gonna sink through that sewer drain, and we defeated Albert. Impossible. I lost. Maybe you should stop juggling your Pokeball over there and trying to look cool, buddy, and focus on the battle instead, then you might get yourself some results. So, there's an item over there, yeah, um... All the items in here, like I was saying before, are really high level because we are at a really high level portion of the game. We are facing legitimate danger. We are facing legitimate threats from all around. And it is real. You have to stay stocked up on the hyper potions and on the full heals and stuff like that. And if you can get your hands on some full restores, even better. Because the trainers around here are going to use things like full restores. And it's really, really annoying. But as you guys saw, they also have really high level Pokemon, so we just have to deal with it, basically. <laughs> we're going to have to deal with some high level fights, and we're going to have to uh, push our way on through Victory Road in order to be able to finally reach the Pokemon League and finish up this game, which I'm super excited about. I can't believe we've come this far. I can't believe this game has gone on for this long already. It's crazy to me. I've loved every step of the way, and thank you guys for watching. Not that this episode is over or anything, but yeah, yeah, whatever. The seemingly infinite and harsh road lives up to its name, of Victory. Although it's kind of weird, Victory Road you feel like should be like, I don't know, like a walk through a hall or something that's gonna take you to the final battles because you're right there, right at the cusp of victory, but it's more like 
you have to spend hours and hours slaving away trying to solve pro uh, puzzles in a strange cave that you've never heard of before. And it's, eh, I don't know. Victory Road, I don't mind in general, especially after I've played, played it a couple times. But Victory Road, oh my god, as a child, it was so grueling, it was so terrifying, it was so awful. Mostly because, like I said in a previous episode, I only tended to train my starter Pokemon. I know, stupid strategy. But after that thing got worn down, it was done. It was over. I couldn't make it through Victory Road after my starter got worn down, so I'd have to keep healing and keep coming back and keep defeating all the trainers over and over and over again. And we defeated Cool Trainer Hope. I guess she never had any hope to begin with. Your battle style is fantastic. But yeah, Victory Road can be really grueling, especially if you're not especially, uh, very familiar with the place. Almost just used especially about 400 times in the same sentence, but... Yeah, make sure you familiarize yourself with the place, make sure you're stocked up on items, and make sure you are ready to go. Now, our good buddy Shino from, like, episode 5 or something like that is making the mighty comeback and helping us out by using the move Flash. Once again, you don't need the move Flash here, but it makes things so, so much easier. Plus, look at that spotlight. I want it to be able to show off my good side, man. I want to see every single side of me. So, let's just go ahead and rock smash this bit first. Actually, I believe that's the way we're supposed to go, and I believe there's an item up this way that we can get. Yeah, let's go ahead and rock smash these. As you guys can see, quite a few HMs are at work in here. So, you're going to have to deal with the strength text. You're going to have to deal with the rock smash text. You're going to have to deal with flashing repeatedly. Well... <laughs> Hopefully you're not uh, too concerned with flashing repeatedly in your day-to-day -day life, but to win your way through the Pokemon League, you need the trust of your Pokemon. Oh, don't worry, honey. I got that one covered. All my Pokemon and I trust each other completely, except for when I completely let them down and they all just, you know, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> everybody makes mistakes, right? Anyway, all this girl has a, is a Claydol, and that is a fairly unique Pokemon to just be hauling around, but it's the only one she's got, so use all the mystical, magical universe powers that you want, Claydol. I'm not concerned, because I'm going to surf you, and I think this will take you out in uh, not one hit. <laughs> I was gonna say one hit, but I keep forgetting the dishwater is actually more of a physical attacker than a special attacker, and I think pretty soon I'm going to put the uh, soft sand on her instead of the mystic water so that we can take advantage of that physical bestiality. <laughs> the second the first syllable of that word came out of my mouth, I knew that sentence wasn't gonna end quite as I had hoped. <laughs> Either way, we defeated Shannon. Your relationship is based on solid trust, and that is the foundation of any good relationship, be it a friend, be it a relationship, relationship, or be it with Pokemon. So, uh, maybe, wait, 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 I believe there's an, uh, yeah, here we go, there we go, we got ourselves a PP up, and over here to the left, there's another hidden item, not quite as valuable one, but we have ourselves an Ultra Ball, so may as well go ahead and pick it up, save yourself a couple hundred Poke Dollars for stuff that we're going to be catching later on, or you can actually catch pretty much fully evolved Pokemon here on Victory Road. You can catch Hariyama, you can catch Golbat, and Golbat isn't fully evolved, but you can catch, um, Leyron. I guess neither of those are fully evolved, but you can catch more evolved Pokemon than you could at any other point in the game, and it's super, super awesome, but, um, it looks like we've been doing some decent progress here on Victory Road, but we also wrapped up the Archie and Maxi plot arts and defeated Wally for the final time in this game. So, that's gonna do it for this episode of Pokemon Emerald. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time where we finish up Victory Road.